The following game has been rated T for teen by the ESRB for violence and language. That means anyone under the age of 13 should not be watching this video. You have been warned. Greetings and salutations. I am Outlier, and I bid you welcome uh, to this channel. Joining me today is, of course, my usual co-hosts, Snowball and Wolf. And today we are going to be playing Mech Warrior Five Mercenaries. So the premise of Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries is that you play as, well, as a Mech Warrior, uh, piloting a military combat vehicle known as a Battle Mech, which is essentially a multi-ton uh, walking vehicle armed to the teeth with high-powered cannons, uh, lasers, short and slash or long-range missiles, uh, as well as lightning guns, and if you can find them, even rail guns. And the story is that you're a mercenary in what's known as the Inner Sphere, which is... Well, yes, but at the same time, no, not really. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, you're a mercenary in what's known as the Inner Sphere, which, according to lore, is essentially the sum collection of the whole of civilized space, and the storyline of the MechWare universe is that humanity uh, built interstellar-capable ships, traveled and explored the stars, settled on hundreds upon hundreds of worlds, and then probably fell apart due to uh, war and strife. Eventually, everybody formed into rather large interstellar governments, uh, which constantly warred against each other and fought each other for land, territory, people, or just to, well, light everybody else on fire. Yes, that's a thing. In this game, at least. Eventually, one of the interstellar nations invented the battle mech and essentially brought everybody else to the negotiation table and created what was known as the Star League, which, uh, think of it as a uh, intergalactic version of the United Nations, just more heavily armed and independently operated. Uh, not exactly. So, this is all backstory. Eventually, the Star League fell due to, uh, well, a coup. Somebody snuck in, took out the uh, Lord ruling the, uh, well, the Star League. Because as technologically advanced as the Mech War universe is, it's predominantly run by a feudal system. But I digress. And as I was saying, uh, the Star League basically fought this coup. Uh, essentially practically eating itself, and uh, eventually one of the intergalactic uh, superpowers, or houses as they were called, or successor states is the official term, decided that they were now in charge of the Star League, and uh, everybody else disagreed, and uh, they went to war against everybody, and atomic weapons were used, amongst other things, which literally knocked humanity back to, well, I want to say almost the Stone Age, but not quite. Although, quite a few technological advances have been, well, wiped out. And 
Uh, if you're lucky, you can find what's known as Lost Tech, which is old, ancient, but still uh, comparatively powerful weaponry and other technology uh, scattered about the Inner Sphere. Well, that's an excellent question. So, as I said, the Star League is a lot like the UN, but with its own independent military. For the large part, that military no longer exists, as it followed its last remaining marshal, general, guy in charge, uh, who go went by the name of Alexander Kerensky. And uh, Kerensky is famous for, well, stopping the coup that basically ate away at the Star League. But he saw that the Star League was falling apart, and rather than allowing his uh, heavily armed, highly experienced crack troops uh, just basically splinter and join various successor states and continue waging war, plunging humanity even further backwards, he decided to basically up and leave. Well, that is a question for this storyline. Uh, if you're at any familiar with the MechWarrior series of games, or even the tabletop strategy game that it's based off called Battletech, you already know the answer as to what happened to Kerensky and uh, his followers. And while what happened to them I don't believe is reflected within the uh, storyline capabilities of MechWarrior uh, 5 Mercenaries, or at least not yet, uh, essentially, he left and his offspring formed their own society uh, with the belief that they would one day return to the Inner Sphere and save it from itself, for lack of a better term. But as I said, that's not actually part of this game as far as I know. So I'll explain more about that if and when it ever actually does A, become part of this game, B, uh, the makers of the MechWarrior series, or at least this game, decide to create MechWarrior 6 involving uh, the descendants of Kerensky, or it is, at, or I find out it actually is part of the game, and I actually get to that part. Uh, the setting for this particular game is set in 3015, so storylines like the return of Kerensky's descendants, uh, the creation of the Federated Commonwealth, the Fourth Succession War, and uh, the Fedcom Civil War, uh, that's all that hasn't happened yet. Uh, so basically it is one of my favorite games and the MechWarrior series has been out for a while on various downloadable platforms which I just don't have access to until recently. And I've been enjoying it quite a bit, so much so that uh, I figured, why not create a video about it? And uh, as such, this game is of course made by... Thank you again. And uh, that being said, let us begin. So this is the main menu. Uh, I could load and continue off where I am, but uh, as you can clearly see, I've been, well, been playing this for quite a while. Uh, basically in between, well, everything. Like I said, I enjoy the game. So while I could basically pick up right where I left off, drop everybody in the middle and have them absolutely no idea what's going on, uh, let's start a new file. Now, there's basically two options. Uh, one is a campaign with a dedicated storyline that gives you a preset character and various tasks complete. Uh, the career mode is just basically campaign but without the story. And since I'm an instant action, is just basically random combat, I guess. And while I'm a big fan of story, so uh, let's start a new campaign. Recommend that players new to the MechWarrior games play the tutorial to learn the core mechanics. I mean, I'm not new to the game, but uh, why not, just for fun. In 2108, humanity began colonizing the stars. 
Their reach would eventually span a vast region of space known as the Inner Sphere. During its golden age, under the governance of the Star League, the Inner Sphere experienced unprecedented peace, prosperity, and technological advancement. But with a great rise comes a great fall. Beset by greed and mistrust, humanity splintered. The Star League crumpled. Technological advancement slowed. The great houses, each vying for supremacy, turned on one another, engaging in a series of conflicts known as the Succession Wars. Amidst this chaos, mercenaries became the proxy forces for the great houses. Numerous battlefields sprung up across the inner sphere, dominated by hulking war machines known as Battle Max. The year is now 3015, and these steel behemoths have become the tools of the mercenaries' trade. It's a lucrative time, yet one beset with perils of all kinds. Only the most skilled and brave among them will rise to become legend. Gotta admit, not bad background music. So anyway, this is the load screen. One of them. So Cavalier Base. DeBerry Prime. 3012. I thought we started in 3015. Captain Mason, please report to the hangar for testing. The Centurion is waiting for you. So anyway, Captain Mason is us. Can't go much further than this. For obvious reasons. There you are. Come on, everyone's waiting. Get to the Centurion at the far end of the hangar and we'll get started. And that reason is so that we don't get crushed by uh, that guy, who is our character's father. And then we're free to travel what's known as the Mech Bay. I have absolutely no idea what battle mech that is. Or was. I think it's missing a few pieces. And by pieces I mean pretty much its entire lower half. So anyway, this is our battle mech, or at least, uh, or mech as it's called, which is the one that we're going to be piloting. As you can see, it is quite tall, so we need to ride this thing all the way up to get into its cockpit. We don't need to do this every mission, just for the initial story, uh, starting point. Alright, son. Fahad wants us to run the Centurion through its paces to see how it does. He spent months getting it operational again after we recovered it from that ruined factory on Ramen 2. What a bloody hell that place was. Hopefully nothing explodes during the test, mate. I'm pretty confident you won't need to eject. No promises, though, eh? He's joking, I think. Go on and power her up. We Good. Fahad? Yeah, bringing up the systems now. Okay, armor and structure display up. Weapon systems up. Tactical display up. Everything looks good to go. Keep in mind there's parts on that mech that are at least 200 years old. So ease it forward slowly, and we'll see how it goes. And don't forget to hit the brake once you're clear of the hangar. Look at her go, eh? That's my girl. She's a beauty, isn't she? Certainly is. Okay, 
Engage reverse throttle and navigate into the waypoint I've set up. Use your tactical display to see where you're going. And we're essentially going forward and then backwards, so... Nice work. Now revert to your drone cam. Let's go ahead and do a left-right rotation test. Alright, so every battle mech has an independently twisting torso. Uh, allows it to move side to side. So as you can clearly see here. Of course, it's saying not to twist the torso, but to turn the legs. Okay, now let's make sure the torso is working properly. Try looking around in all directions. Alright, so... I generally prefer the first person view. I know I'm crazy like that, but I prefer it. Good. And, uh, As you can see, the torso rotates independently from the legs. Your direction of movement, therefore, may differ from the direction you're actually looking. If you check your tack screen, you can see your current leg orientation is represented by the dotted line, and your torso orientation is represented by the cone. Move your torso to the left or right, then try aligning your legs with the torso. Looking good. The mobility course is next. Show me how fast you can get through those turns while still hitting each of the waypoints. Now one thing I don't like about this game that none of the others previously did was that the legs move independent of the torso completely. In other past games, uh, you could still move the torso independently, but if, say, you were to turn the battle mech... Um, yeah, so as you can see, the legs are swinging back and forth, but the mech, it's, but the torso itself is staying put. Now, in past games, the torso would, st would stay fixed to whatever twisting amount you put it to, so it would look more like this, as opposed to, well, this. Just one of the few nitpicky pieces that I have about it. It makes aiming hard when I'm not paying attention to a I'm sure where I'm traveling and which direction I'm actually traveling in. Nice Suddenly work. I'll just the Centurion was made to have a good balance between speed and firepower. All we have to do now is find out if the weapon systems work. Boy, what do you mean if the weapons work? You know how long I spent stripping each one of those components and putting them back together again? They'll bloody well work, mate. <laughs> you heard the man. Let's go shoot some stuff. Follow me. You know, back when I was your age, I once slammed the hunchback I was piloting right into my instructor's javelin. Oh man, was he pissed. Come on, Mason. Yeah. Go ahead, Rihanna. Thought you'd want to know that all repairs to the Leopard have been completed. We're now spaceworthy and ready to take on our next contract. How's the kid faring? Huh. He's a natural, just like his old man. I see humility is still in short supply, as usual. Just don't break that mech. We need it in full working order. She talking to him or me? And we're mech warriors. Humility is one of the few things we don't have in stock. Weapon systems are now online, gents. Be gentle, hey. Always, my friend. <laughs> yeah, right. That's a lot of bollocks, isn't it? <laughs> All right. I've mapped the auto cannon to weapon group one. You're free to fire whenever you're ready. Alright, so as I was saying, uh, I'm generally, at least in the past, I was generally used to having the torso be fixed in relation to the legs. So since the legs move independently in this one, there have been times when I thought I've been, the legs have been facing directly my way or off in a different direction, and suddenly the torso hits the maximum allotment, and I go veering off course, and usually I'm firing at the time, so... I don't hit what I'm aiming for, but uh, speaking of aiming at things, let's do that. Okay. Take note of your ammo level. 
levels. Always remember to manage your reserves. You run out of shells in the middle of a firefight. It could be your last one. Lasers Which are mapped is... to weapon group two. Fire them when ready. Which is generally why I prefer lasers. No ammo. Oh, that's a nice boom. Does this right. do the same? That's good enough. Those or lasers not. generate significant heat. You can see the temperature readout next to your armor and structure display. All weapons generate heat when fired. You overheat your mech during a firefight, and, and it could trigger a shutdown, so keep that in mind. Now for the fun stuff. Long-range missiles are set to weapon group three. The target lock has been disabled for the moment, but never mind that. Just go ahead and fire at will. Okay, there's just this destroyed city we can just open fire on. Well, as you can see, LRMs don't track unless you have a target lock on something. Yep, they're as dumb as a post without it. Well, let's try targeting a drone first, and this time before you fire your LRMs. Target acquired. Hell of a difference having that target lock, doesn't it? The next step is to test moving and firing at the same time. I've set up a series of aerial targets for you. Move through the aerial combat course as quickly as you can and shoot the drones down. I'll meet up with you on the other side. Target acquired. Target destroyed. Target destroyed. Alright, so as far as I know, this isn't timed and we don't get scored. Which is probably good, considering I couldn't hit that target. But for those who don't know, battle mechs are powered by a nuclear fusion reactor. And uh, everything that you fire generates waste heat. Which is the one restriction that battle mechs have. Well, that and weight. There are a variety of different battle mechs of various different sizes. And, uh... A battle mech can only carry the amount of uh, weight that it's rated for. So the Centurion that I'm currently piloting is what's known as a 50 ton battle mech. Which means that it can carry up to, uh, well, 50 tons of stuff. Now, it's not 50 tons of weapons. In fact, most of the battle mech is comprised of its internal structure, engine, uh, various other components as well as armor, which is your only protection, because in the Battletech universe, shields, as far as I know, don't exist. Energy shields, as far as I know, don't exist. Target acquired. Target destroyed. So, while the Centurion is a 50-ton mech, I only have, like, about 20 tons or so to play with in terms of, uh, fitting stuff on. Well, nice shooting. Now take up a position by the barricade. Okay, I've projected three mechs, each with differing damage profiles. You should see them in the ravine below. Target the first one on your left. You can zoom in on the target for a more accurate shot, if you need to. Targeting and telemetry seem to be working. Note the center torso on that first mech. It's reading heavily damaged. Destroying the CT will destroy the mech no matter its relative condition. Go ahead and destroy the center torso. See that second mech? Both legs are heavily damaged. With one leg destroyed, mechs become easy targets. Both legs? <laughs> it's over for them. Take out both legs. It would help if I didn't miss. is seriously damaged. It's a difficult shot to make, especially in the chaos of battle. But the fastest way to take out a mech is to eliminate the pilot. Go ahead and try shooting the cockpit. There you go. Now we're almost done. The battle simulation I've set up for you is the last hurdle. Follow me. You're gonna go head to head with an urban mech. They're slow and poorly armored. Perfect for this particular test. Should be a piece of cake for a pilot like you. 
They're also heavily armed. One should not, um, what's the word I want to use? Take the urban mechs lightly. Dismiss the urban mech. That's what I wanted to say. Which is pretty much the exact same thing. Because while they are light mechs at only 35 metric tons, heaviness is comparative in this game. Well, in the universe, I should say. The urban mechs are generally armed with some of the largest uh, auto cannons known to the inner sphere. And with me being too close for uh, missiles, I get to use my own auto cannon. And lasers. Nice work. I think we can call it a day. The Centurion seems fully fit and ready for battle. Let's head back. When we get back to the base, we'll buy Fahad a few beers to say thanks. Yeah, Can we get cake too? We'll have to listen to him gripe about how rough we are on his battle mechs. Small price to pay, I suppose, for having one of the best mechanics in the entire inner sphere. Can you turn a hundred metric tons of steer wool into an atlas overnight? Yeah, true. Okay, so now it's 3015, basically three years later. It's still the DeBerry system. We're at the rendezvous here. point, but our contact isn't here. You see anyone, son? The salvage crates at the last checkpoint were empty. Now, something's up if they're missing payments. This is Commander Mason of Major Campbell. Make a note. Looks like someone is going to need a lesson in paying their bills on time. That's odd. What the hell? Knowledge. I have a visual. Kinda hard to miss. It's plenty wide, sir. We are evacuating. We need to take what we have and go. The fastest way is across the swamp. Captain, where are you going? It's possible they left the cash at the last checkpoint in the city. Let's get the money and run, Commander. This is reckless. We need to get back to base. They're distracted with the invasion. We'll be in and out before they know we're here. Let's hope it's not us they're after. So this is basically what happens in the interstate. I don't like this, son. This is a ghost town. We're close. I can smell the sea bills. There's nothing here. Relax. We'll be out of here in no time. We're being tagged! Look out! Incoming airstrike! What's your status? I'm fine, Commander. Left arm is offline is all. That was close. Return to base now. I am not leaving you behind. We were set up, and you're in no shape to fight. Meet me at the extraction point with the Leopard. Go! Now, Captain! Damn it. On the move. That's what he gets for trying to... I've got eyes on. Identified. Hunchback and King Crab. Uh, damn it. Rihanna, any idea what these guys want? I picked up some chatter about coordinates of some kind. That mean anything to you? Coordinates? No, Rihanna. Promise me you won't leave without Jake. Promise me. Commander, I promise. Oh, 
under attack. Now that that thing can fly. Unless he was counting on it. Casualty count is rising rapidly. Hurry! En route! Commander Jake is on board. We're taking off. We can't leave him here. We gotta get him support. Now one missile salvo from a um, battle mech can't take out a dropship, even a leopard class. Believe me, I've tried. Twenty seventh of May, thirty fifteen, stole to Barry, six days after the attack on Cavalier Base. So, this is us. We don't really get to see us because, well, we don't. Uh, this is, I guess, our quarters on the leopard class dropship. I don't think it actually has a name, but uh, we don't really use this room all that much, so not important. Anyway, walk out here and here's the command center. So we need to speak with Reyna. Uh, Reyna is this person right here. Uh, various guards wandering about. Well, not really wandering about, they're just standing around, but they're basically as much uh, set dressing as this chair here. But anyway, we need to speak Monday. to Reyna. Good to see you all. We haven't really had a chance to speak since your father was killed. I'm not much for sentimentality, but I worked with your father for a long time. He was a good man. Hell, he sacrificed his life to save ours. I don't know what's gonna happen next, but whatever it is, I'd like to be part of it. I'd like to stay on as your ops commander. That is, if you'll have me. Are you kidding me? Your family, Rihanna, are as close as I have now. Besides, I'm gonna need you. Yes. I suspect you will. About Isitrep, it's not great news. Those bastards that came after us are in the process of setting up a blockade of the system, which means we're going to be trapped here with a tightening noose around our necks unless we do something about it. Who are these guys? Another mercenary outfit by the looks of it. I don't know more than that at the moment. And these coordinates they were looking for? Not a clue, but we're going to find out. First things first, we need transport out of the system. That means a jump ship. I sent out a transmission right after the attack through the HPG. The message was for a longtime client of your father's and an old friend of mine. Name is Spears. He has powerful connections. I'm hoping he can help us out. Until I hear back from him, there's nothing we can do except lay low. In the meantime, Fahad wants to see you down in the hangar. The Centurion needs repairs and he wants to discuss them with you. I'll let you know when I hear back from Spears. Copy that. Alright, so basically the dropship that we're currently in, ferries, vehicles, battle mix, cargo, what have you, through space, we're planning to plan it. The jump ship, the vehicle that Rainer was talking about, is a massive kilometer long vessel that dropships attached to, and then the jump ship jumps from system to system up to, I believe, 30 light years, although it could be 50, don't hold me to that. 
But due to the technical uh, regression of the uh, Succession Wars, the ability to make dropships has been well forgotten. So dropships are a hot commodity and not everybody can have one. So while we own the dropship, the... Did I keep calling it a dropship or a jump ship? Jump ships are lost technology. So while we own this dropship and dropships are basically a dime a dozen, Jump ships, or at least the FDL drives that they come equipped with, are not, so we don't have one of those. Anyway, this is our chief uh, mechanic, Baha. Hey mate, figured you want an update on the Centurion. Took a bloody beating back there, so fair warning, it's gonna be a while before she's operational again. Means you're gonna have to get comfortable with the light mech over in Bay 1 for now. She's a good girl, won't let you down and treat her right. I'll do my best. Yeah, heard that before. Anyways, you know the drill. Access the repair terminal here. Once you're done, I'll get started on the work, okay? I mean, the Centurion looks fine. It's just missing an arm and the legs are broken and uh, it's covered in dirt. And yeah, I think the auto cannon's angled wrong. But it's fine. Anyway, this is the mech bay. Uh, this is where the four primary mechs sit. I do actually enjoy this area quite a bit because whatever mechs you have set in these bays, well, they change based on the mechs you have set to the bays. Uh, so you can have your four favorite mechs, the four mechs you're about to drop with, all that fun stuff. You can come down here and look at them in all the magnificent glory. And yes, I'm fairly certain I'm staring at this one's crotch, so let's just keep moving. So this is a brief example on how to repair the mech, uh, I mean, I'll just go through it right now. So basically, I have access to two mechs right now, this Javelin, a 30 ton battle mech, and uh, this Centurion, the 50 ton battle mech, as I said. The Javelin is perfectly 1% fine, and what we're going to be taking the next mission now uh, on with it. The Centurion, however, is a completely other, another issue, it has absolutely no armor, uh, it speeds, low, it looks like it took a hit to the heat sinks, uh, so we need to fix it. So we basically go to this, go to loadout, I mean we don't have to go to loadout, we can just tell it to repair, but um, so this is the basic view, we can swap out the weapons from here, or you can go to the more advanced view, so if you need things like uh, to add in more ammo, or extra heat sinks, or to fix broken components, because repairing doesn't actually uh, replace broken components it just repairs the damaged ones uh, this is the screen that you do it from and the reason why we can't take the centurion out is because it's literally broken uh, it looks like the right leg is completely gone uh, you can tell that because the armor is set to zero as is structure so armor protects the battle mech as I said and once all the armor is gone the uh, weapons fire to that particular area eats into the structure once both the armor and the structure is gone, that particular uh, part of the battle mech gets destroyed. And in the case of, say, arms or legs, well, in the case of the arms, they get blown off clean uh, completely. So if we back out completely, uh, that's the reason why the left arm on the Centurion is missing. And by contrast, now normally in prior games, if a leg is taken out, well, MechWarrior 2, the mech would just stop moving to begin with and just stand there. In MechWarrior 3, it would fall down. Uh, technically the same with MechWarrior 4, though it took a little bit more to actually take out a leg. In this one, as uh, they said in the tutorial, you actually have to take out both legs in order to take out the mech. But uh, because the right leg is completely gone, uh, it will hobble around. The left leg is still somewhat functioning, which is why we didn't fall over and lose the mech. The torsos are still intact for the most part, missing all of its armor, and uh, the head is, well, still there, uh, which is how we were able to flee, because once the head's gone, that's where the cockpit is, and as I said, if the head's gone, uh, the pilot's effectively dead. Ejects. Basically, much like losing the center torso, where the nuclear fusion reactor is located, uh, the mech is essentially destroyed. So uh, we just hit repair all. So it repairs everything, and then if something was actually destroyed, I'd have to go in and swap it back out independently. So then I hit start work, and because this is a uh, combat zone that we're in, and, uh, it requires an extra 20% more to complete, as well as 30% more time. So battle mechs take forever to uh, 
repair and uh, rearm, and if you're swapping out weapons, and all that's uh, basically counted in days. So right now, right where we're at, it would take 47 days to completely repair the Centurion. Let's get started. And that puts in a work order. And now if the Javelin was also damaged, I could put in another work order for that. And uh, they would happen uh, concurrently. So if, like, say the Javelin took 10 days to fix or modify, uh, then 10 days would pass, the Javelin would be fine, and I'd have 37 days left for the Centurion. But the Javelin's fine, so we don't need to worry about that. All right, now we have to go speak back to with uh, Reyna. Hey, Commander. I've received a transmission from Spears in response to my request for help. Take a listen. Rihanna, I received your message. I'm sorry to hear about Nikolai. He was a good man and an even better pilot. He'll be sorely missed. I assume his son will be taking over the operation. Nikolai was always bragging about the boy's skills. Well, I hope he was right. I've begun working on a plan to get you safe passage out of the system. But it's going to take a little time. I expect you already know by now that whoever attacked you has set up a blockade to prevent your escape. It's a large system, though, so we can use that to our advantage. As soon as you receive this, I want you to proceed to the outermost planet in the system. It's a little more than a hunk of ice with a few leftover mining operations on it. There's an abandoned power station there. Now, I've got it on good authority that local raiders are using it as a secret cache for their ill-gotten goods. I know you can use supplies and materials for your repairs, and I expect you'll find what you need at that location. I've attached the exact coordinates to this message. Once I have a proper plan in place, I'll contact you again. For now, be safe. All right, time to suit up, Commander. I've already input the coordinates. All I need is for you to sign off and get us there. Understood. So the technology for two-way uh, interstellar communication hasn't technically been built yet. There is a way, but uh, it's only for... How should I put this? Uh, the rich, famous, and powerful and wealthy? Uh, because it basically requires two HPG net, uh, relay stations transmitting simultaneously. An HPG is a hyperpulse generator, which is... Uh, essentially a massive satellite dish that flings information from one uh, HPG station to another and that's how interstellar communications work and uh, HPG technology much like jump ships is I believe considered lost tech uh, but even if it isn't and people can build more every HPG is owned and operated by an organization known as Comstar They are a neutral third party. Uh, because neutral is kind of a uh, suggestive and uh, open to interpretation term. They may be pulling strings behind the strings that uh, move governments. Uh, but uh, this game isn't about them, at least not directly. So. Uh, we go to the, uh, I guess, mission select screen, home screen, what have you. So uh, I can operate the timeline, which um, uh, moves things along, changes the date. So if the Javelin were, again, under repairs for 10 days, I'll go to the timeline, hit next event, and if that was next event, the uh, timeline would advance 10 days and the Javelin would fit. So it's due in three days. I have to pay people for seventy-five thousand, what's known as C bills, which is uh, Comstar's money. Like I said, they are the neutral third party, but uh, in everybody's little uh, honeypot. The universe does still spin, even though you're not uh, a part of it just yet. And uh, there's various. Uh, news stories going on that sometimes crop up and appear that you can read uh, that just basically serve as filler for the going-ons of the inner sphere and the uh, mech warrior slash battletech universe as a whole 
And uh, this is uh, usually about all the primary interesting events that happen behind the scenes. Like for instance, uh, Prince da uh, First Prince Dabbing returns victorious from raid against House Karita uh, is a, a story about how the newly crowned First Prince Hans Davian returned to the Federation Sun success uh, following a successful raid against House Karita's uh, Halstead Station. I don't think this is actually referred to anywhere in the books, but it basically talks about how um, Hans Davian, the new ruler of the Federated Sons, one of the successor states, uh, he recently took over after his brother Ian died in battle. Uh, there's the Merrick Civil War, Maximilian Leo basically supports uh, one side of the Merrick Civil War, uh, Merrick and Leo and Carita, or three of the other five successor states, and uh, the fourth one's run by an organ by a family known as Steiner. As I said, uh, feudal uh, system set up. Even the ones that claim they're not feudal and uh, uh, operate on a democracy, they're feudal based for all but name. So yeah, fun stuff there. But no one's here to actually uh, have me read the news, so let's hit view transmissions. And it's Rainer talking about uh, our next storyline job, which is, Okay, Commander, I'm going to drop us down well away from the target location let you do your thing. Power is an abandoned power plant. We know the Raiders have been using the area as a secret cache for whatever goods they managed to pilfer from the various mining outfits. So with a little luck, we'll be able to cover enough material to finish the repairs on Leopard and Centurion. These Raiders may be a band of thieves, but don't underestimate them. They'll be motivated to protect their loot, and you can bet that they'll be well armed. Stay on point, or watch your six, Commander. Good luck. Alright, so uh, then we just simply hit accept. And uh, that creates, well, because the transmission was the next thing we had to do, uh, that uh, accesses the timeline. So now we could technically advance the timeline all the way until the Centurion is fixed, but the uh, game I don't think wants us to do that. So this talks about the uh, contract screen. So this is how we accept various jobs. So uh, we select the job. If there's multiple jobs, then we can choose between them. Uh, but there isn't. There's only this smash and grab job from Interstellar Expeditions, where I'm guessing that's a picture of Spears. It says, I have it on good authority that the local raiders are using the abandoned power station as a secret cache for their ill-gotten goods. I expect to find what you need for your repairs, but don't count on them just letting you walk out of there without a fight. So we select that, and then we can opt between various uh, negotiated bonuses. And, uh, negotiated bonuses that we have available, the number that we have available, is dependent upon the total negotiation points that we have. Since we're just basically starting right now, we only have one point. So we can opt for an extra payout, which adds a uh, quarter million seed bills to the amount paid out. I can opt for an extra three salvage shares, which allows us uh, three extra things of salvage, or I can opt for 400,000 Seabulls worth of damage coverage, which uh, damage has to be paid for in terms of uh, Seabulls to repair the armor and place the components, and damage coverage is basically insurance against how much damage we take. So I can take up to 400,000 Seabulls worth of damage, and that's the amount that I would get paid back at the end of the mission. Since I only have one negotiation point to uh, spend, and I have just shy of 1.5 million Seabills, uh, let's actually go with extra salvage shares, because the Javelin definitely isn't worth 400,000 uh, Seabills to uh, cover. Because if it gets broken up to 400,000 Seabills worth of stuff, then I'm fairly certain the mech would blow up first. There is also airstrike capabilities, but I don't have access to that just yet, so no option even if I did have points to spare. Alright, so there's that and uh, there is a tonnage limit so I can only take up to 30 tons worth of battle mech and that's not just 30 tons per battle mech, that's total. So if we hit confirm I then go to the land selection screen. So in the in-game universe the uh, basic military formation of industry battle mechs is four mechs known as a lance. So that is the total number of mechs I can field. And if I did have 
extra mechs and extra pilots, which I don't really have right now, I can select various mechs uh, for the other mech warriors to pilot, and then I can go as a group. But since it's just me and only have two mechs available, uh, I can't do that. Plus, the Centurion is broken, and even if it wasn't broken and was fully flying and capable, I again only have a 30 ton uh, drop limit, so I can only take the job. So let's launch. And once again, here we are in the Leopard. Now the cockpit does look different because we are again in a different battle mix than the battle mix we're piloting during training. Okay. The abandoned power station is located on the other side of the ridge. You should be able to make your way through the pass undetected. That javelin you're piloting is lightly armed, Commander. But what it lacks in firepower and armor, it makes up in speed and mobility. I'm sure you wish the Centurion was repaired and ready to go. For this particular mission, though, the Javelin is the mech best suited for the job. And hey, it has jump jets. They could come in handy. Good try, Rihanna, but I'd still rather have the Centurion. Well, can't blame a girl for trying. Alright, so as Rihanna just mentioned, the Javelin has what's known as jump jets. Not every battle mech can field jump jets, but basically it allows the uh, battle mech to fly or jump for short periods of time. Useful for getting over small obstacles, but as I said, not every battle mech can field or even use jump jets. This isn't like uh, the prayer games with their omni mechs that can fit everything. being used by these raiders is derelict, Commander, but you can bet its perimeter defenses won't be. My guess? The raiders will have turrets stationed around the perimeter. If that's the case, it means they must have a generator close by. Find and destroy that generator before assaulting the plant, and you'll have a much easier time of it. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. So that's a tank. I'm detecting enemy units up ahead. Could be a radio patrol. Copy. Target destroyed. Target acquired. Target destroyed. Target destroyed. I gotta remember that everything, all weapons have a uh, limited range, so the medium lasers only operate up to 270 meters. So anything outside of that, uh, I can't hit. Now tanks, since they're small, what I can do is I can just basically step on them. It does cause the battle mech a small amount of damage, but you know, I can only aim down so far chunk of ice blocking the path down to the generator. Use your jump jets to get over it. Perfect. With the generator blown, the turret should be disabled now. Target is why we have jump jets. And that's not why we have jump jets. But if we somehow took the jump jets off, uh, we couldn't progress. up ahead. There's a number of storage buildings in and around the plant itself. I suspect that's where they're storing their loot. Time to smash and grab, Commander. Once you locate a storage crate, more keep a pickup, then move on to the next building. From my initial scans of the site, I've marked where I think the crates could be located. Look there first. Roger that. Target destroyed. 
Also, every laser and other weapon has a reload or recharge um, cooldown meter, so you know, it can't just fire willy-nilly, and this teaches you how to collect salvage. Good work. Marks for pickup. Well, you know, I can just walk clean through the building. Commander, it appears that Derelict Plant has a network of backup generators running. Destroy them if you can. Okay. Okay, now we're the backup generators. There's 12 of them. Oh, you're a big tank. We're a big tank. Frame on the lower right hand, left hand screen, I should say. Lower right hand is the uh, weapons loadout. Uh, the lower left hand side of the screen shows the damage on the battlement. So, looks like the left torso is running low on armor. Uh, the left arm and leg is has moderate armor loss, and everything else is largely fine. Tell the salvages by uh, the blue hologram. As they said, you can just walk up to it, stop, and then okay, collect it. it. Keep looking. Usually, it gives you a small amount of sea bills, and stepping on the building where the salvage is located probably does not help the salvage much. But as we're saying, usually gives you just a small amount of sea bills and a weapon or the component or a moderate amount. Anything worth blowing up on your way out, say a weapon depot or something, I won't object. Okay, understood. Okay, and then a lot of the missions do require that um, you hit the extraction point, which is a preset point that you have to get to in order for the mission to end. Usually, reinforcements show up and uh, stuff happens. By stuff, I mean you fight them. Alright, and uh. Stop. Where am I? Where do I need to be? So the track is this way. At over. two kilometers. Let's break that fight just for fun. Well, not fun. It looks important. And there's another tank out there. Two tanks, actually. back here so I can step on you. Now the front side of the center torso is now has moderate armor loss. Uh, unlike the legs and arms and technically the head, 
the torsos, left, right, and center, have also rear armor. So that's why on the wireframe, if you look, the front part of the center torso is orange, but the back side of it is still yellow. And uh, here's the leopard. I don't think they actually give it a name. Nice work, Commander. We were able to recover the materials we needed from that raid of cash, and Fahad has already started the repairs to the leopard and centurion. You've made him a very happy man, though I doubt he'll admit it. All right, and uh, that's the mission. The good question, what's wrong with the Leopard if it can still fly? I mean, it's probably just repair facilities and components. Uh, the fact that it, I would say it wouldn't be able to have breathable atmosphere, but I think we traveled from one planet to this one, so it has to be at the very least space worthy. Could be also weapons. Its weapon systems could be down. Alright, and then we go to the end of mission screen. So, reputation is, uh, well, shown on this progress bar. Every mission that we do gets us reputation points, and that furthers the, uh, progression of the bar. Basically, essentially, experience. And we also get, uh, a quarter million seedbills as payout. So, this is the salvage screen. Uh, as I said, we had salvage shares, so... Anything that uh, we destroy that's still in somewhat uh, usable condition, we can claim as salvage. And the number and stuff that we can pick up... I didn't destroy the weapons people and stuff. I forgot about it completely. My apologies. That's why I didn't get any bonus cash. Usually better at it than that. But uh, as I was saying, you just select all of this for um, salvage. So I pick up a spare medium laser and three machine guns, one of slightly higher quality than the other two. And uh, I didn't have any damage coverage, but I did take 34,500 sea bills worth of armor damage on the javelin. Uh, running and operating battle mechs is expensive. I would have gotten more seed bills had I blown up the weapons depot, but again, I forgot about completely. And also, on the objectives and outcomes, uh, the employer is happy because we won, so we get uh, extra nine points of standing with them. And the opponents, the bandits, weren't happy with us, so we lose seven points of standing with them. So uh, let's continue. And this is a breakdown of how everybody did. If I had other lance mates, it would show them. And uh, it would show their total number of kills, breakdown of what those kills were, uh, how much damage they took, and how much damage they dealt, as well as progress on various uh, statistics and other fun things that uh, they can level up on. So, and uh, this is basically debriefing from the storyline. So, Major Rihanna Campbell says, Nice work, Commander. We able to recover the materials we needed from the Raider cache, and Fahad has already started repairs the Leopard and Centurion. You've made him a very happy man, although I doubt he'll admit it. That's basically what you said. While you were taking on the Raiders, uh, Spears contacted me. As a plan in place to get us out of our current predicament, head up to the bridge when you get a chance and I'll fill you in. I get an extra 50,000 Seabulls because, again, storyline mission. And uh, there's another news piece uh, talking about a new type of battle mech known as the... Uh, this is Commando 1-1B, unveiled by the Coventry Metalworks in the uh, Lyrian Commonwealth, uh, which is the successor state run by the Steiner Dynasty. So now I have to speak to Fahad, and uh, it automatically puts me out of the back bay, because that's what it does. Hey, boss man, that was quite the haul you brought back. Gonna make the repairs a bit easier now. But don't go getting stars in your eyes or nothing. I'm overworked as it is, and this shit needs a lot of loving, eh? So your Centurion is still gonna take plenty of time to fix. But yeah, like I said, nice job out there. Your old man will be proud. Now if there's nothing else, gonna get back at it. All right, a lot of work to do. Story of my life. He streaks me as the type of person who's only happy when he's complaining. But uh, since the uh, javelin took damage, we have to go fix that. 
So, uh, if we look at its loadout, it has four medium lasers uh, on the left and right, well, four medium lasers in total. Uh, two of them on each of the right and left torsos. It's also got heat sinks on those same torsos, as well as the head, and uh, two jump jets on both the center torso and each of the legs. And uh, nothing on the arms, which means that the arms don't really do much. Uh, I believe in the tabletop variant of the game, you can use battle mechs for melee purposes, but uh, that's not optional in the video games, at the very least not this one. I think things still get damaged if you run into them fast enough, but uh, that's not the same thing as a standard melee attack. Uh, but that means that the arms can get shot off and I technically lose no components. But uh, let's repair all the armor, just simply because uh, better armored mechs usually survives for longer. And uh, that's going to take six days just to fix everything, on top of everything else so that gets added to the timeline so in six days the javelin gets fixed and in 37 the centurion gets fixed and in 90 days the next payment becomes due because we are a mercenary outfit and everybody wants to get paid apparently we uh, pay people on a quarterly cycle which makes no sense in my mind but uh, it's how it is so I can't really complain but I do have to speak to Rihanna so I have to walk all the way up here and I guess I could technically take that flight of stairs, but this one's closer. Or, you know, these stairs over here. But, uh, again, multiple ways to get to the same place, which is here. Good work with those raiders, Commander. While you were planet side, I got word from Spears about the plan he's put in place for us. Take a listen. Rihanna, Commander. Good news. I think I can get you safely past the blockade with the aid of a local mining company. To make everything work, I'm gonna have to find you guys a recycled mercenary identification number. A new identity, essentially. Nick's Cavaliers, for all intents and purposes, no longer exists. I'll match that number to a new name of your choosing once the time comes. So, think about what you want to call yourselves. While I arrange that, you're gonna have to do a little work for the mining company in exchange for their cooperation. If things go well, they've agreed to hire you to transport some precious cargo out of the system aboard an inbound jump ship. Using the new mercenary ID and with a legitimate contract in hand, you should have no problem slipping through the blockade. I've attached the particulars to this message. I'll be in touch once you've completed the mission. Good luck. I already reviewed the information Spears sent. The mission is a straight-up protect and defend op. Seems these raiders have been harassing the mining company, among others. Stealing from them, extorting them, killing innocent civilians when their demands weren't met. I've uploaded the pertinent details into the mission briefing, so I won't repeat them here. You're good to launch any time, Commander. Roger that. I'll see you on the other side. Now, I do kind of wonder who exactly Spears is. I mean, in this type of universe, or reality, or anywhere, generally, uh, no average person can make all of these gears work. Uh, either in person or from far away and have all the knowledge that he has. So he has to be working for someone higher up or be someone higher up. But it gets us out of here, so I shouldn't complain. He's one of the few friends we still have. So view transmissions. Uh, the mining company settlement is vulnerable to radar attack commander, so we've got to protect it. I'll drop you in at a safe distance once on the ground, head there and defend it. Should be a simple in and out mission, but no plan survives contact with the enemy as the saying goes, so be prepared for whatever comes. Good luck. Except, however, both our mechs are broken, so we have to go to the timeline and we have to move uh, time forward by six days. Because apparently, while the settlement is in danger of being attacked, uh, it apparently can wait a week. So, once again, the mining company's settlement is vulnerable to raider attacks, so we've got to protect it. Once on the ground, head there and defend it. Should be a simple in and out. Once again, we only have one uh, negotiation share, so let's stick it in salvage just because I like having stuff and for the amount of stuff that I need to pay for and have access to right now uh, 1.6 million should actually cover it. Plus I still get paid normally. Confirm. Weather, Commander. It'll compromise your visibility. So they say. Let's go.
Alright, so out we go. We know very little about these raiders' overall strength or sheer numbers. So keep a sharp lookout for enemy units on your approach to that settlement. Copy that. All right, so this. Please help us. The raiders are attacking our settlement. There are women and children here. Rihanna, something's interfering with my sensors. I think the raiders have set up some sort of jamming device nearby. I'll see if I can locate it. You just stepped on a building. Target acquired. Target destroyed. So this is a defensive mission. I basically have to fight off waves of enemies uh, without losing the base itself. Currently it's at 98% because I think I stepped on something. And enemies will keep spawning uh, until I hit a preset limit towards uh, to them. Uh, and I gotta make certain that the base stays intact, most of it. Uh, until I can take out everybody. And uh, dropping a uh, charred remains of a helicopter onto a watchtower does not do that. So let's shoot this SRM carrier before it gets within range of the settlement. I'm fairly certain its SRMs actually outrange our lasers. So it's uh, kind of a point. Oh, look, and this thing's packing an AC 5. Was packing an AC 5. I just blew it up. And the base health is now down to 89%, 88%. Because this tank snuck around behind us. hit the weapons depot last mission, but again, I forgot about its existence. So. Can't destroy what I can't find. Nice work. These civilians are safe for the moment. Unfortunately, it appears the raiders aren't done causing trouble just yet. They're headed for the company's main processing facility on the other side of the mountain. You need to get there and thwart that attack, Commander. Understood. Alright, so this part of the mission isn't standard. Usually it's defend against X number of units and then afterwards the mission ends. Uh, sometimes if it's what, rather than it being a defensive one, it's known as a war zone, I can stick around forever I want and just fight off ever increasing waves and waves and waves of enemies uh, until either all my mechs break and I decide to, or and slash where I decide to leave. Rihanna, so, my sensors are getting worse. The jamming device the raider set up is at the top of this pass, Commander. You're going to have to manage as best you can until you're able to take it out. Target acquired. This part of this mission is special. Get back here so I can shoot Target you. Destroyed. Target acquired. Missed. I think something behind me shooted me. Was. Okay. With that jamming device eliminated, your sensors should have cleared up. Yeah, much better. Your onboard radar should also be operational now. You'll be able to detect enemies at a significant distance, just in time too. That mining facility is getting hit hard, Commander. Alright, so we do what I did last time and just jump over this impassable part. Now 
and we walk clean off of a cliff. And we can skip the turn, the uh, cut back. Destroy those radar units. Roger that. You made it. We need your help. The raiders are trying to destroy our facility. It's all we have. I'm sure it is. Target acquired. Target destroyed. Of course, I should point out that even with enhanced sensor ranges, everything still requires line of sight. So, you know, if I can't see them, or if the sensors can't see them directly, at least not initially, uh, I still don't know if they're there, which is why these little red circles keep showing up and then disappearing and then showing up again. I know there's somebody around here. At least there should have been. I walked in. No, there actually is somebody around here. There you are. There you were. This just hadn't recharged yet, so I just stepped on that guy. So who else is left? Usually as the counter to denote how many enemies are remain. Let's not step on the fuel tanks. Or the thing I'm trying to fix. Keep safe as I walk clean through a good chunk of it. Enemy VTOLs inbound on your position, Commander. That eagle is a piece of heavy machinery with tons of firepower. If left unchecked, it will do a lot of damage to the settlement. You should prioritize taking it out over the smaller enemies. Okay, but I want this tank first. Alright, so where's this eagle? Those weren't the Igors. Where are you? There you are. There you go. Of course, dropping a uh, flying vehicle on, or a a flying vehicle onto something I'm trying to protect and not blow up, is probably a bad idea, as would be walk complete through a stack of bikes. Good work, Commander. That should make the mining company happy. Prepare for exfil. I'm on my way. All right, and uh, I don't actually have to make it to the exfiltration point. Uh, mission just ends. All right, so I'm fairly certain they still had at least 70% of a base. Still more than two thirds. Right, and we gain enough reputation to upgrade to rank two. So we go from new to unknown, and our reputation across the inner sphere is growing. Yay, us. And the next rank is unfamiliar. We gain an extra 200,000 sea bulls and 38 uh, reputation. Alright, now I can salvage well, a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, again, the objectives is because it's the same people, uh, Interstellar Expeditions, because I saved quite a bit of their stuff, uh, I gained 12 recognition points with them, and I'm not recognized uh, by them, and then the bandits are losing extra 8, and I'm, but I'm still indifferent to them. There are no secondary objectives completed, and I took 22,000 uh, siebels worth of damage. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of extra stuff that I can uh, pick up for salvage. More so than I actually have salvage shares to complete. 
So at this point, I should probably go and pick and choose what exactly I want. I mean, I could just go with the most expensive stuff on the list, but that would just simply be three AC5s. And I probably don't need three AC5s at this point. So let's actually go with these two LRM10, well, one LRM10, uh, these two AC2s, and a small laser. Uh, because I don't really bother with short range missiles or machine guns. And that's all my salvage shares. So let us continue. And uh, again, I go up in a couple stats, and uh, that's the battle mug. Alright, so uh, Major Campbell states, Outstanding job. Those raiders were intent on shutting down the entire mining operation. And that mobile jamming tower almost put a spanner in the works. Luckily, it didn't, thanks to you. There's a lot of people down there who owe you their lives tonight, Commander. As for what happens now, Spirits has been in touch. Seems we have one more mission to execute before the mining company will sign off on the transport contract. We need that contract as cover to get past the blockade, so we don't have much choice to do as they ask. Come see me when you're cleaned up, and I'll give you the full rundown. I get an extra 50,000 sepals for that. So if I, I, I don't actually have to walk into the uh, mech hangar to uh, do anything, well, to look at the battle mechs, I can just tab over to the battle mech screen. And oh look, the centurion is fixed, but uh, we'll get to that later, so... If we look at the uh, javelin, it only lost armor, so let's just hit repair mech. And it just says everything that's being done, and it will take four days and 26,401 sea bills. So it actually costs more to fix it than the damage I took. That's because I'm doing it in the middle of a combat zone where things cost 20% more. Let's throw it in the books anyway. Anyway, got to talk to Rihanna. Arena. I mispronounced her name, didn't I? Oh well. Commander, it turns out the bastards who attacked us and who have set up the blockade are a mercenary outfit by the name of Black Inferno. Unfortunately, that's about all we know at the moment. Spears and I will try to dig up more information if we can. The time will come when we can extract some proper vengeance. But right now, we have more pressing concerns. Inferno forces are closing in on our location. That means we only have a small window in which to fulfill our obligations to the mining company and haul ass out of here. The company wants us to take down the raiders for good by destroying their base of operations. Once that's done, they'll arrange passage for us aboard the inbound jump ship. I've detailed the mission briefing and it's waiting for your sign off. You're free to launch whenever you're ready, Commander. Roger that. Alright, so if we go to the console, new transmissions, uh, so Major uh, Raina Campbell says, Decades ago, this planet was the epicenter of a mining gold rush. Of course, it wasn't gold the miners were after, but rhodium. It was boomed and bust for most of the companies, which means there are a lot of abandoned infrastructure left behind. One of these mining locations is where the raiders are currently holed up. Expect a larger enemy presence than we saw at the power plant commanded. You need to eliminate all of them and destroy as much infrastructure as possible. Our employees want these raiders put out of business for good, so give them hell. And then Fahad has a message as well. Hey bossman from Arena uh, says the next mission is going to be a bit of a doozy. Good thing I've got the Centurion fit as a fiddle and ready to go, eh? She's got plenty of firepower, especially compared to the Javelin, in case you wanted to upgrade. I thought you should know. You're welcome, by the way. Happy to be of service. Anything I can help? To get us off this bleeding ice cube, mate. Know what I mean? Uh, Alright, that's it. Talk to you later. And Centurion Mech is now ready to be used. So, as you saw pre before the mission, uh, I had 90 days to the next payment. This time I have 47, because apparently, uh, defending a mining settlement took 43 days. So if I go to contracts, actually... Yeah, it's still the same news. So if I go to contracts... Spears has another job. We've located the Raiders base of operations. Decades ago, this planet was the epicenter of a mining gold rush. One of these mining locations is where the Raiders are holed up. Expect more numbers than you saw at the power plant. Limit all enemy forces and destroy as much infrastructure as possible. The objective is to put these Raiders out of business once and for all. And uh, because we're not recognized by the interstellar expeditions, we get one extra negotiation point. And because we are a uh, level two in terms of reputation we get another at negotiation point so now we actually have three negotiation points to play with so 
I can actually put two, I can only put two of them into salvage shares, but I can get up to nine shares of salvage at this time. And I have one extra point, so I can get uh, an extra 200,000, 250,000 seabulls, or or 400,000 worth of damage coverage. Since it's still the initial storyline campaign, I should be good in terms of damage coverage, or at least 400,000 should be enough to cover the battle mix short of its complete and utter destruction. So let's actually go in for some more money. And again, no airstrikes possible. So we hit confirm. And since the javelin is damaged because I didn't bother to wait for it to get fixed, uh, I can wait four days be uh, to start the mission and have the javelin be finished. I can hit edit mech and select the Centurion. Give it a second to load. And there we go. So then we hit ready uh, and it finishes loading and then in three seconds we start. Then the music kicks in because now we go to war. These raiders are taking down on murderers and thieves, Commander. Don't show them any mercy. Oh, I don't intend to. You get the horns. That's it. Exactly. I've got enemy contacts up ahead, Commander. They must have detected us on the way in. So the Centurion is different in terms of Javelin because it's bigger and heavier and slower. Uh, it doesn't move as quickly. Uh, it is also armed with an AC-10, LRM-10, and two medium lasers compared to the four medium lasers of the Javelin. It's, as I said, heavier. And uh, it, another major fact is no jump jets, so no flying with this one. Uh, no, you can't put jump jets on the Centurion, at least not this Don't variant of the flight. Centurion. Oh, this thing has a PPC. As well as auto cannons. Well, if you're gonna walk up to me, I might as well just step on you. the Igor, as I missed with the uh, auto cannon. The first time, anyway. Alright, and that's a PPC straight to the center torso. Yes, I saw you back there. As I just step on it. There's the raider base. Eliminate all enemies and raise it to the ground, Commander. Copy that. All right, so much like the defensive mission, uh, this location has a set amount of health, but unlike the defensive mission, where I'm trying to keep its health as high as possible, I'm trying to drop its health down to zero. So, I basically have to destroy a good chunk of it, if not everything. And while I can shoot all my lovely weapons at everything, uh, I could also just simply walk into it. All ground forces have been eliminated. Oh, goody. Time to finish destroying that base, Commander. I should point out 
found out that these taller buildings have an uh, inner core that's indestructible. So while I can walk through, well, the buildings are just walked through, I can't walk through uh, this thing. I get stuck like right there. But I still have to destroy everything. I think I can walk through this one. Nope, no, I can't. And there's one more tank left. Was one more tank left. Of course, there's still plenty to destroy and more aircraft. Okay, so if you look at the uh, wireframe display in the lower left hand corner, you notice that the left arm is now yellow. That means, whereas the outline for everything else is various colors, the outline is the armor, which means that the armor is of various effectiveness. However, when a piece component fills in with a color like that, like the uh, left arm has done, it means that there's no armor left and it's taking structural damage. It means I need to avoid taking hits to the left arm, otherwise I'm going to lose the left arm. Now, normally that'd be a cause for concern, but the thing about the Centurion is, is that the left arm is used for melee combat, which, as I said before, is it available in this game, at least not in the sense that uh, the tabletop or even the Battletech strategy game allows for. So, the left arm on the Centurion is what I call a vestigial limb. Yes, I think that's the term for it. Basically, uh, it means that the uh, limb is expendable and slash or useless. So, uh, oftentimes I'll get hit in the left arm and the left arm will get taken out. And I either won't notice or be slightly miffed about it, but I'll keep going on with my day because it doesn't affect the next weapon's capabilities. And I'm just walking clean through these buildings. Completely. Because I can. I can shoot them, but why waste the ammo? I just blow out some more chunks on the way out. Just for fun and profit. And more VTOLs show up. As I just simply take one out. That was a bright explosion. I usually don't like leaving enemies behind, but uh, I'm in the middle of a uh, ravine, crevice, passageway, crevasse, what have you, and uh, the VTOL flew off over the cliff, so I can no longer see it. And now I can see it, sort of. Maybe kind of sort of is. Where are you? Oh, there you were. There you were. And there are now more vehicles along the way. No idea if this is important, but I'm going to shoot it anyway. Looks like and the raiders somehow got their hands on a spider mech. It's fast but lightly armored. Avoid letting it get behind you. It also starts with one leg damage, which means if I can shoot off said leg, it won't be moving as fast. Of course, the problem is shooting it in said leg, and now the left torso is armorless, which means the um. It makes up for it with speed and agility. A deadly combination if it gets into your blind spots. 
This one seems to have pre-existing damage on his right leg. If you're having trouble hitting the critical areas, try focusing fire there instead. You may be able to wipe out his mobility advantage. Nicely done. That's already dead. Get to the extraction point, and I'll pick you up. As I was saying, while I consider the left limb expendable, the left torso is not, because that's what houses the LRM-10 launcher. And now that the Leopard has showed up, uh, we should have an easier time escaping. Because the Leopard is heavily armed. Comparatively. And there we go. Alright, and it shows the javelin because that's what's still in Bay 1. But uh, we gain 475,000 seabulls and 40 reputation points. And now I should point out that if the. I damage a mech to the point where it's taken out, but it can still be recovered or salvaged. It would also appear on this screen. Now, Battle Mechs require a whole pile of salvage shares, more so than even the nine that I have would allow it. I think I've only ever seen a few that were eight, but usually I have to rip those guys in half before um, you know, they get that few salvage shares. But I do have quite a few other stuff I can pick up, and uh, first thing I want to pick up is this PPC, or Particle Projection Cannon, which is a powerful lightning gun. I can't use it, because neither mech can fit the PPC, but uh, it's one of the more powerful weapons out there. I'll also take another AC-5, in case I break the one that I have, and uh, yeah, another LRM-10. In fact, two LRM-10s. I'll even take this AC-2, as well as two of these medium lasers. And I have six spare Class 5 jump jets, so I won't take any of those. Seven spare heat sinks, don't really need machine guns or SRM 2s. And I make, uh, and I incur 77,620 in terms of damage uh, cost. So let's continue. And uh, I broke yet another mech. So, I mean, I didn't really break it, it didn't lose any parts, just uh, heavy structural, well, moderate structural damage to the left side and uh, armor loss. I Alright, so Raina Campbell states that spider mech might be small, but it's also fast. Excellent work taking it out. Thanks to you, the Raider forces have been all but eliminated and their infrastructure destroyed. Best of all, I just heard back from Spears. The mining company couldn't be happier with our efforts and has expedited the transport contract aboard the inbound drop, uh, jump ship. We're about to be given a second life commander. We get 50,000 extra seabulls for that. Need to speak to Fahad. And it spits me out right next to him. Sort of. Wrong button. Also a wrong button. Hey there, Gov. I hear we finally got a name for these bastards who've been chasing us down. Black Bloody Inferno, eh? Right? Well, that's a load of bollocks, isn't it? You know what a Black Inferno is? It's bloody smoke, mate. All right, then. Nice chat. Gonna get back to work now. Okay. Now I could repair it. Well, yeah. So I could repair the mech, but it could also uh, adjust its loadout. But uh, I probably need what it has shortly. And if you notice, it took so much damage to the left torso, the rocket launcher or the missile launcher is actually damaged. So we're gonna have to fix that as well. So this is gonna take 13 days and 93,144 seals. And now I have to speak to Reina. Hi, Commander. Thanks to your efforts, the mining company have kept their word and booked us transport on a jump ship. Spears has also obtained a new mercenary ID number. So, all we need to do now is choose a new name for our merc outfits, and we're good to go. I'll leave that up to you. Once you've registered the new name, come back and see me. Will do. Alright, so this is one of the few times I have to actually have to walk back into this office slash sleeping quarters. Where everybody else sleeps on this thing, I have absolutely no idea, and I just realized it's a bonsai tree right here. 
actually kind of cool. Anyway, uh, the, the, the new name. So operations, and I then need to pick a uh, name and symbol. So these are a variety of different ones to choose from. Not really a fan of that one. I think these are various options based off of in-game lore units and the successor states. Like for instance, I'm fairly certain this is a take on the Cameron Star or the um, Star League symbol. This I think is Merrick uh, based off of, but I like the bird, so this is the one that I use on uh, what I've been playing on. But you know what? I mean, I could eat a world, but uh, I kind of like the battle axes as well, so we'll go with that one. And instead of Nick's Cavaliers, we need a bold name, a strong name, a name that will strike fear into the hearts of enemies. I could do that. But never let it be said that I don't sometimes partake in borderline potty humor. So we'll go with Out's House. And then I need to speak to Reyna again. And since I was last in the office slash sleeping quarters, that's where it's been back out at. So then we talk to Reyna. Okay, Commander. Everything is set for our departure. The transport contract with the mining company is a false flag Spears and I set up with their cooperation. The mining company has legally hired us to transport cargo for them. But in reality, there is no cargo. Just a destination and some very convincing paperwork. So, where are we headed? We've been asked by Screws to help him out of a jam. I think we owe him. I agree. What's he need us to do? Spears works for Interstellar Expeditions, one of the largest archaeological collectives in the Inner Sphere. They do archaeological digs and conduct research into abandoned Star League era facilities in the pursuit of lost technology from before the Succession Wars. One of the expedition's dig sites has come under attack. A rogue mercenary group is intent on pillaging a Star League supply depot that IE uncovered on Brooklyn Prime. We're going in to help protect the site. Spears will provide more detailed information on what exactly we're facing once we arrive. For now, I've uploaded the coordinates into the nav system. Before we can launch, you need to sign off on the op and get us to the system. Roger that. Alright, so then we go to the console, which gets the home screen. Uh, Major Campbell gives us a message. The situation is dire. Commander the Merc Alfred Spears hired to protect the dig site has taken heavy losses and can't hold out much longer. You need to get down to the surface and reinforce them before the last of the defenses crumble. Unfortunately, I have no idea what you're going to drop into, so you may be coming in hot. Once on the ground, uh, the objective is simple. Stave off the enemy attacks until additional reinforcements arrive. The counting on you, Commander. Hold the line. Alright, so the thing about the next mission is that it's not on Den uh, DeBerry. So we need to travel. Travel requires uh, flying to a new, well technically flying to the jump ship. This is the jump ship, not the small little plane-like thing in the foreground, the thing it's connecting to. Alright, and now that we're attached to this docking collar, the jump ship, which hangs out at the star, uh, jumps or, well, accelerates to light speed or jumps. Basically, it rips a hole in the fabric of space-time and uh, moves from location to location. So, here we are, and uh, jump ships don't travel instantaneously. They take about a week between charges, so... Uh, not to mention traveling from location to location. So while it took 13... Uh, days to fix the Centurion, more than 13 days has passed. So, from traveling from Deberry to Brook Lane. So, the Centurion is now completely fixed. Now, I can select contracts and actually complete the mission, and again, and I still have three negotiation points to play with, and the objective is simple 
hold off the enemy forces and secure the site until additional reinforcements arrive. But I've played this mission, it is a rather long mission, and uh, I've been playing for quite a bit right now and things are starting to run out of battery power. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, save this next mission for next time and I'm going to call it here. Everybody stay safe from the plague and um, have a good day.